Hi, this is Bobby Gentry at a guard session, and here's your host, Skitch Henderson. Thank you, Miss Gentry. We are here, of course, as you know, for the National Guard. Our guest for the guard session, I'm very happy to say, is Miss Bobby Gentry, lady of, of appeal as far as the record industry is concerned, and I suppose the film industry, from well, the rumor factory hath that. Uh, but a lady of, of, of taste. Bobby, you had a different type of exploitation than anybody I've ever known in your profession after the fame of your record. By that I mean uh, Bobby Gentry and Women's Wear Daily. Isn't that a departure, really, for somebody in your... Do you uh, say bag? I don't know what else to say today. <laughs> yes, I says. suppose we do say that. Uh -huh. uh, yes, uh, uh, because of a particular style the fashion industry seemed to be intrigued with, that I came out of the Delta and was known for wearing Levi's and that kind of thing. Uh, for some reason, uh, because of the image that was projected through the song, they became interested in, in what I might think about fashion. So I subsequently, I did quite a few fashion layouts, and, and one of the things that I did was for Women's Wear Daily. Had you always been fashion conscious? Uh, yes, I suppose so, for a few years. Uh, coming out of high school, I think, I, I think I really started to get interested in fashion, fashion, as you say, when I was yeah. uh, about a junior in high school. Because women's wear is pretty high bracket, you know. I mean, there are a lot of articles on performers that get in all kinds of publications, but women's wear, it has been my experience at least, that they duck you pretty far. They might say you're appearing at the Rink Toe Lodge, but that's about it yes. if you're seen with somebody. Yes. So it was interesting to me. Yes, I, well, I enjoyed it. Uh, I had... Uh, also, up until this point, I've never appeared on a, a television show in anything but pants. And, uh, yes, I'd forgotten that. So I, had, uh, I have a designer in Los Angeles, uh, Boyd Clopton, and he makes up lots of, of uh, very nice pants suits and things for me, very unusual things. And of course now that's the ER rage, it seems. Yes, it's now it, it really has come into its own. If you're putting together the hit parade of popular music, at least in our life and times, I suppose that song would sit very heavy, wouldn't it? Has anybody said anything, Bobby, about where it would rest in popularity? Uh, you mean over so, a length of yes. time? Well, a lot of people uh, have tried to classify my music as being <laughs> folk music, as they've tried to classify it in, in, in many areas. Mm -hmm. But uh, what are I, you? I don't know. I don't really have a classification myself. But for that particular song, Ode to Billy Joe, uh, uh, there's been lots of comment that perhaps it would last a long time. My own feeling about folk songs is that you don't write a folk song. A song becomes a folk song if it, if it is absorbed into the culture of a particular region, if it has any longevity to it. So maybe we'll see in, in 40 or 50 years if people are still singing Ode to Billy Joe like, say, Frankie and Johnny, then it would be considered a folk song. And you'll song smile and bow. I would love it. I wonder if, if people, when they hear a song which becomes popular, what is it that attracts them? What was it in Billy Joe? Is it the story? What do you think it is? I don't know. Or but what I, was it, I should say? I think it would apply, apply to individuals as to what they found out of that song and certainly would apply to particular groups of people as to what they drew from it. But that was mass media. That wasn't the youngers or the olders no, or the middlers, No, it did it? seem to have a universal appeal, and I think partially uh, the reason is that it dealt with real emotions and, and real, real situations and that everyone could, uh, could identify with it. You see, even if you weren't from the South, you could identify with the emotion and the human nature that was involved in the story, that, that uh, in, uh, factor of human nature, nature that of indifference. Uh, here a very tragic event occurred, and yet it was discussed around the dinner table as something no more important than passing the peas or plowing the back 40. And I was pointing that out, and that, that uh, part of human nature would certainly be reflected in almost any culture. It's funny to talk to somebody and hear them, especially a lady as glamorous as you, and hear you say, plowing the back 40. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, believe it or not, I, I was... The voice of experience. <laughs> I didn't have to do too much outdoor work, but uh, I was born on a farm in Chickasaw County, Mississippi, and we had no electricity or no plumbing. Mm -hmm. and I can even remember going to church on Sunday in a mule-drawn wagon. Beautiful sounds to hear. Sounds that are important for us to hear are occasionally a message from the Guard, and if you don't mind, I'll pause for a moment to do that right now. Yes, let's do that. What is the National Guard doing in Vietnam? They're fighting. What is the National Guard doing in Maryland? They're looking for a lost child. What is the National Guard doing in Ohio? Helping a community in the aftermath of a flood. What is the National Guard doing in Cuba? ferrying supplies to our Marines in Guantanamo. What is the National Guard doing in Hawaii? The National Guard is that state's total air defense. What is the National Guard doing? 
fighting our country's battles, defending each citizen's rights, helping our communities in times of strife. What can you do for the National Guard? The next time you see a guardsman, say thanks. That's all. Bobby, I want to thank you so much for being our guest this week with for or with or for or above and beyond guard session. Will you come back next week? Thank you. I would just love to, and I've enjoyed it today. Okay. Till then, may I remind you that your National Guard is an action team to be proud of and thankful for. Hi, this is Bobby Gentry at a guard session, and here's your host, Skitch Henderson. Thank you, Bobby Gentry, for those kind words. It's a pleasure to be here each and every week for the National Guard. And it's a great pleasure to hear you sing, and it's a great pleasure to hear the combination of you and Glenn Campbell. How did you and Glenn get together? Well, Glenn and I are, are old friends, actually, before either of us did any serious recording, but... Where, uh, in California? Was yes, this yes, although Glenn is a native of Delight, Arkansas, which is an Nobody awful lot... Nobody could be a lady, native of Delight? Delight. Delight, you said. <laughs> it's funny how... We'll get back to Glenn, but it's funny how people of the South or of that... Jenner or that milieu or whatever it is, they live with it the rest of their life and never leaves, does it? Yes, that's true. I think so. The charm of it. Now let's go back to Glenn and say... Oh, yes. Well, about this album, we recorded a whole album together after the 1967 Grammy Awards that Glenn and I had been fortunate enough to, to receive some awards. We went on a concert tour mm -hmm. of the South, and at the beginning of the tour, we uh, uh, only... Uh, we did our own portions of the show and nothing else. And then after we'd finish a show, we would uh, uh, rehearse some and sing together and, and play around mostly with tunes. And we started inserting them at the end of the act. And by the end of the concert tour, we had quite a repertoire. And when we got back to Los Angeles, we recorded the album. Gee, isn't it easy? You know, everybody <laughs> says it's so terribly difficult to exist in this profession. My guest is Bobby Gentry, and that, that makes it just about as easy as it can be. Bobby, how much do you tour a year now? Do you still tour a great deal? Well, I do tour, although uh, most of the year has been made up of club dates rather than one-night concert mm -hmm. tours. So I, although I travel quite a bit, I'm not doing one-nighters so much anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, we are here all this week for the Guard, and our guest is Bobby Gentry. And Bobby, let me say a word about them right now, may I? Good. Let's talk for a minute about the special wars that are fought by the National Guard, not the wars on the battlefield, but the wars the Guard fights against natural disasters. Do you realize that guardsmen battle floods, blizzards, fires, tornadoes, working to save property and lives? From Bunker Hill to Vietnam, the guard has distinguished itself for gallantry on the battlefield. The sound of our guest all of this month for the guard, Miss Bobby Gentry. Miss Gentry. Oh, you have to be called Miss Gentry. The southern lady always has to be called Miss Gentry. Bobby, where did it begin with you? I had... I don't know. I must be honest. Had it... Would I have known you, or would I have ever met you? I didn't live in California. I mean, I haven't lived in California for years. I've been in New York, but did I ever meet you or see no. you? No, uh, although I was, I was active enough in the profession, I was, uh, uh, I wasn't known. Ode to Billy Joe was the first record I ever made. What's your music background? Do you have a technical, do you have a technical assist training, as we say? Well, I started uh, formal piano when I was in my early teens, and I went to UCLA and also the Conservatory of Music in Los Angeles. Yes. You went to UCLA? Yes. Yeah, I share that joy with you. Or was it <laughs> sorrow? I don't know. When I went to UCLA, it was a lovely, warm, kind of small, comfortable school. It was a big, comfortable school, but it was small by what UCLA is today. It's yes. such an unbelievable conglomerate of confusion to me. When I go out there, I'm terrified. Oh, uh, I know. It's... It, uh I had a difficult time adjusting because I graduated from a private school with 12 people in my graduating class. Where in the world was this? It was, it was in Palm Springs. Oh. Right. And uh, then when I enrolled in... 12 people. 12 Isn't people. That a lovely figure? Compared to the 400 in my yeah. class. At what a UCLA. way to learn. Yeah. yeah. And then what did you do when you came from Palm Springs? Uh, I moved to Los Angeles and went to school and was working my way through school and had mm -hmm. any number of odd jobs. I did secretarial work and would be involved in music when I could, worked on mm -hmm. the weekends and so forth. Bobby, is this what you always wanted? Did it happen the way you wanted it to happen? Yes, I, I have to admit I've always been quite single-minded about what I wanted to mm -hmm. do and where I wanted my career to head. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I have been convinced of it since I was a small girl. I wrote my first song when I was seven years old. In fact, I do it in my uh, club act now. You do the song in your yeah. club act? We should reincarnate Mozart. You could go on the road together and have, <laughs> have a tremendous, let's see, Mozart and Gentry, no, Gentry and Mozart. <laughs> I don't know which way it well, would work. Well, alphabetically, maybe. <laughs> it would work out better for me, anyway. Are you married, Bobby? No, I've never been married. 
Do you ever think about it? It's a well, lonesome life, I'll, isn't I'll, it, for somebody all in girls your think about it, I think. But if a gentleman did come along and, you know, he hears the name right away, I'm sure he stands at attention for a couple of hours, and it's hard to have normal relationships, isn't it? I suppose so, but also the, the opportunities don't present themselves as much, especially I find most of the people that I'm involved with or, or, or ever see or spend any time at all with are in the business, and it usually has to do with some, some project that I'm doing. So there's not that much time for any kind of social life. We don't have a string section here, but I'm sure Miss Gentry will one day find happiness and joy in the, <laughs> in the pleasantry of life. We're here for the guard, for this guard session, which is a joy. And Bobby, thank you for being our guest this week and letting us peer into the inner life of Bobby Gentry. May we do a little more peering on another date? I would love to, and thank you. I've enjoyed it. Thank you, Bobby Gentry. And until then, this is Skitch Henderson reminding you that your National Guard is an action team that you can be proud of and thankful for.